dream of making art more of a full-time gig, but I do like to be able to dabble and experiment without the pressure of, you know, eating and surviving. So um, that's about it. I, I really enjoy, I mean, I love the ocean. It, this is actually a picture that I took when I was last at the Outer Banks. Mm. And I've been exploring other mediums because it's kind of nice to change it up, uh, not always do the same thing. I feel like as an artist, in order to grow, you you know, sometimes you have to expand your skill sets and see what other things you might be good at, so. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna start with some basic questions. <laughs> so um, where are you located? I am in Ashburn. Okay. And um, based on my Etsy shop and um, just direct me messaging, I can ship worldwide. So just because I'm, I'm local and in Nashville doesn't mean people can't commission me or order my art. Right. And um, have you been in the area a long time? I didn't put that on the list. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I moved here in 99 and um, I graduated from Central Florida and I was just, you know, I'm a computer geek by day. and. They, they have happened to move me up here and I kind of fell in love with Northern Virginia and stayed ever since. Awesome. All right. And then um, when did you start creating this style of art or actually any style of art in general? Like what became your I actually have, as a child, I used to enter, you know, painting contests and drawing contests. And then for some odd reason, I left art for almost 20 years um, after, you know, as I became an adult. And it's kind of sad because now that I've rediscovered it and I, I truly started kind of taking hold of, uh, um, accepting it back into my life around 2017, mm -hmm. I really started mastering some of the mediums that I took on. And it's such a soul like, um, satisfying activity for me it's almost like a um, therapy that I really do wish that I had been doing this all along and maybe have even made it somewhat of a part-time career but you know after having three kids and in full swing with my career uh, it's more of a hobby but it doesn't mean that I won't do this one day it's just not Today. Anytime soon. Yeah, just yes. not today. Yes, not today. <laughs> yeah. But you'll get better and better, so it's a good thing. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Where where did wait, 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 wait. What did I say here? Oh, what is your inspiration? So let's talk about that. So what inspired you to get to this point? Well, I really every time I can escape, I run to the beach. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So either the Caribbean, our family loves to travel, we've, you know, gone to Hawaii, and the ocean just it mesmerizes me. So I really started um, getting into Instagram and following other artists like Ann Upton. Uh, she was one of the pioneer, I feel like, ocean resin artists, and her stuff would just fascinate me, and the shine of of um you know when you do resin it gives this beautiful shine and i think i just fell in love with the shine i, I, I like shiny things and so between my travels and then just my love for nature i i just i, I really wanted to focus and hone in on how to create ocean art that's awesome okay and what well, i'm sorry what was her name again ann upton yeah, she's, she's, she's like the queen of resin art. Okay. Ocean art. Ocean art, yeah. So um, I'm going to skip over the note. I just put in who inspires you. Then um, um, so you had mentioned you sell it on Etsy. So at the end, I'll, I'll um, throw this up on the screen too so everybody can get your Etsy address. And then do you take on commissions? I do. I've had actually worldwide commissions anywhere from Russia to Dubai. Mm. Uh, Australia and um, I think my most recent one actually I'm, I'm currently working on one for another Australian lady and so when people reach out to me directly it really does just like um, it touches my heart and soul so much because there are pieces that I'll just do experimentally and 
it, it ends up being turning out really beautiful. And the fact that like people want me to replicate the look is, is super sweet. And so sometimes I'll get a totally unique request. And then other times I'll get something, uh, a request to make something very similar that I've done in the past. That's awesome. And then I remember you were working on this one big commission piece, that huge painting and it was yeah. kind of cool just getting update daily updates on how you were doing and you were like talking about how long it took to dry and then you had to do certain things to it. So that was pretty cool. Um, what's your favorite? Well, I think I already know the answer, but what's your favorite medium to work with? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I do talk a lot about resin, but I think I have a love and acrylic. And then when you put them together, it's, it's even more fabulous. But um, each kind of gives a different a much different effect and so i do go in spurts there are times where i'll really focus on resin and then i like need a break and then i'll focus back on acrylic maybe even learn like new techniques and then i'll switch right back so i am kind of a moody artist <laughs> <laughs> i i just do what makes me happy and then um you know i i, I mostly do art for me and you know it's always uh, sugar on top if someone wants to buy it, but I concentrate mostly just on the, you know, creation side, just because that's what I like. Yeah, that's awesome. And you, uh, this wasn't on the list, but we kind of talked about you've been doing some shows, like craft art shows. Mm -hmm. So um, I know it's a terrible time right now, but <laughs> are there any in the fall coming up that you know of that you might be in or people can you know, see your stuff in person? Yeah, I really believe I belong in an ocean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a beach town. And so I was looking into Virginia Beach uh, to do one of their, I think it's called the Neptune. It's a really big show. Um, but yeah, unfortunately with COVID, everything is canceled. So plan right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm hoarding a lot of art. And hopefully we'll work towards, you know, maybe update or you know like adding them to my etsy shop yeah. or just having a local sale when things kind of open back up yeah so you had said you can make art out of anything so what is the most interesting or strangest thing that you've used to make art from so uh my texture art or you know my 3d tables although they're not as functional you know i, I try to make them functional by putting the 3D portion of it on the outer edge of a table, but something something funny, and then it just kind of like um, dawned on me. I was walking through my in-laws forest, and I would see moss, and I would see bark, like, and then I would see some trees that fell over and that you could peel the bark, and I thought, you know, this bark looks a lot like cliffs. Like, if, if I were to be able to infuse them into a painting, it, it does, it looks like realistic um, uh, landscaping. And so I just went for it. And by applying resin over the bark, it preserves it. And so the bark stays as is. Now, depending on what kind of tree, you know, you use the bark that you use, some of it, um, it's very porous. And so the resin will just like drain right through and it'll make it almost like a like a really dark brown others seems to work in that you can lay over resin and it, it, it maintains its color and beauty and so I've actually made quite a few pieces infusing bark from trees so it's kind of cool up oh, Sam you're on mute sorry I was trying to be very nice and just not click around while you were talking okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I bring up your Instagram page, I'll be able to, uh, you, you can maybe point out a few weird ones that you've done. Sure. So, okay. Then, um, do you teach any classes right now? I know we had talked about that in the past. <laughs> so I've had, um, a few classes, uh, hosted at the library for acrylic pouring and then kind of more like a paint night type, uh, class. For me, resin is difficult to to teach only because resin requires dedicated space to be and lots of heat guns so the kind of workshop i would want for 
a resin class. Right now, I'm not able to support, but one day I would love to teach resin, teach others how to do, you know, these beautiful ocean seascapes. I've been exploring more resin type um, creations like geodes and coasters. Um, so I believe there's a lot more. I've even been making like 3D, uh, I'm sorry, like lampshades out of resin. And so I'm just exploring different avenues. Um, I love doing ocean art, but sometimes, you know, like I said, you just kind of need a break. Um, you do kind of hit like, um, it's not, it's like a, it's almost like a block, a blocker sometimes where I feel like things are just not going my way. And so if that happens, then I know that maybe I need to just kind of take a step back and then get back to it once I, I get that energy um, back, my mojo, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I do that with photography all the time. Yeah. Especially now that we're kind of indoors more, I'm doing more macro, so I never thought I'd like it. <laughs> and I really do. <laughs> Uh, no, your work is stunning, Sam. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> so, um, would you teach one-on-one -on -one classes if you, if people were interested? Right now, um, I have had requests for one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I prefer to do resin in a well, like super well ventilated space. I just feel over time, doing it in my art room in my house is not. I just don't like it. Just just in case I'm like exposing my family to unnecessary rooms. And so the setup that I have at my house is not, not conducive. Um, I have done a few one-on-ones with um, friends mm -hmm. and, and some family, but uh, right, right now I'm not quite teaching resin. Acrylic pours, I'm more than willing. I've had a few classes from coworkers who've requested it and that's gone really well. But right now I have nothing scheduled, especially with this thing going on. Yeah, once it's over, we should do like a wine and pour. <laughs> oh, that'd be. <laughs> it would be really messy and everybody could just drink and yes. throw, throw paint everywhere. <laughs> yes, I'm totally in. Yeah. Um, so my last main question is, um, do you have a favorite commissioned piece that you've done? And, uh, I do. I had a lady in Dubai um, order a resin table for her friend, for her dear friend, and I felt like it was such a generous and uh, beautiful gift because she wanted me to mold uh, the uh, island of Sardinia in Italy as a memory for her friend of their vacation together. and. I use a uh, fine green concrete called 3D Crete from uh, Counterculture DIY, uh, the company. And using that fine grain um, concrete, you're able to shape things. Uh, it adheres to wood naturally, so I don't have to add glue or anything. And so I molded that island. I molded all, you know, I molded Italy with the boot and all the uh, land around there and I must have done like five layers of resin and that thing had so much depth that it was actually really difficult once I finished it to like give it to, to her to give to her friend um, I just fell in love with the table so much and it was something I had not done before and so by making it completely functional and not 3d I actually liked it a lot more because then you're able to use the whole the whole table I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just, I've been doing it out of like courtesy, but I'll stop. So I'm going to bring up uh, your Instagram page and share it. Okay. And then I'm just going to go down the page. And if you just want to talk about a few pieces and if anybody has questions, I've muted everybody, but you can unmute yourselves if, if you have a question or All right, let me share this page. Can everybody see? The Instagram page, you could just shake your head <laughs> or whatever you want to do. And then, so this is, um, so if everybody just wants to follow on Instagram, um, L-J-A-X-A-R-T, and uh, I'll just go down and if, if there's anything you want to talk about, I'll point to it. <laughs> well, so if you click on that third picture to your right called LJX Art Sales. Okay. This is actually a close-up of um, the Sardinia table. Oh, very nice. So, 
Thank you. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, lately, um, if you go throughout my feed, I, I definitely have pockets where I'm really concentrated on certain mediums. Right now, uh, counter, I, you know, I've been working a lot with counterculture DIY. What's wonderful about Instagram is if you do increase your following, I have uh, several companies that reach out to me uh, in exchange for like uh, use of their products. You know, they'll send me free products to to work with and, and make my creations. And I just, I love this relationship. It's, it's great. They are super supportive. They supply me with things that, you know, I may be low on just to kind of keep that relationship going and to keep the, um, the art going um, they are very happy with the products I create and I'm super happy with their products because they're really high quality products. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Happy to promote. Yeah. I love this piece so much and I realize that it's, it's really just, here's the edge of the actual yeah. piece, but I love the spill off so much. <laughs> I do too. Oh my gosh. If oh, you thank you. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because I just was in the middle of spinning and I look back and I'm like, oh, that is like kind of stunning. Like the way yeah. that the rays are like shooting out. I can create this for you anytime soon. Well, I was thinking <laughs> you should just make sure that you always capture it as a photo and then just sell that. My goodness, that could be like, you know, a screen background, just whatever. It could be like... <laughs> It could be like a cell phone case. It's the coolest thing ever. Oh, it is. Is that an acrylic pour? Yeah, so this is a art technique called Sheely. She is an Australian artist who does the most amazing blooms. There, it is an acrylic. She just, she's, um, to me, she is like a scientist because the way in which she figured out how to use house paints and then like tinting and then um, how to incorporate that using Floetrol. There's just different additives and um, a combination of different art, I'm sorry, different acrylic additives that you add in order to uh, have the paint behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And there's like a real science to this, but to me, I'm very, I'm like a rookie uh, with these acrylic blooms. Um, they're not, and, and what's funny is the blow is huge. Like in order for you to kind of get the, um, the paint to disperse in a way that makes it look like a flower bloom, you have to either have a tool, which the tool, figuring out the right tool can be very tricky. Like I, you know, I go through like five different hair dryers because I'm still trying to like achieve the effect that I have in my mind. Or you can use your breath. And so for these tiles, it's manageable for me to use my breath. But if you don't blow it in the right amount of, like, I guess, throughput, <laughs> you're not going to achieve the effect you want. And so it, it's, it's like, a, it's really wild to kind of go through these motions sometimes when doing art because you really won't know until you try. And then, like, and then like as you go, you really do kind of discover, like, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been exper experimenting with alcohol inks and trying to find what can I blow it, you know, I'm trying yep. the different dryers and heat guns, straws, breath, whatever, and it's, yeah. I agree, yeah, um, finding that right tool yes. can be part of the, you know, part of the trick for sure. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's so neat. Is there anything that stands out that you want to talk about on here? Um, maybe keep going. Let me see if I see anything. Oh, I love you love these. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Just amazing. Um, yeah, see, I was participating in the April for Artists Challenge by Phoebe Gander. She's a uh, New Zealand artist. And so a lot of these posts were just for me to meet, like, you know, whatever the subject was at the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a few maybe. Is this what you were talking about with that 3D? Yes, that is the 3D Crete that you can mold different land. You can mold land. Um, I've actually used it on my geodes to make like almost like a stone. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's a mold. That's a, um, that's Dominican Republic. Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. I actually have an upcoming project I'm doing. It's a five foot whale um, that I'm going to oh. mold the islands 
I'm going to mold Hawaii. Wow. I'm going to go across the entire whale's body. This is beautiful. I like get uh, like um, sprockets and stuff. So I'm like. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that clock, that particular clock is actually the commission I'm doing for the Australian client. That's beautiful. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, with resin, you want to do at least two layers, if not more. Sometimes I do five layers um, in order to achieve that clock right in the middle right there, Sam. Yeah. That's my favorite piece. I yeah. love that. Uh, thank you. It was a clock I found at Target, and it was like the one and only. It turns out they discontinued this clock. I was so devastated. But um, I saw it, and I just decided to mold a bunch of different islands. And I just kept kept at it, and it just kept getting more and more rich in depth. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at it in person, this thing is like, just really, it really, really like, um, I feel like it speaks to me. <laughs> yeah. It looks like drone photography to me. It's like yeah. amazing. How heavy does it make it? Does it add like uh, pounds? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so resin, all resin is, is actually plastic. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'd say it just adds, I don't even know, but it's, it doesn't make it too heavy. You know, if you start with like a thick solid wood and then you add resin, I mean, definitely for sure, like shipping. Shipping for me, uh, the dimensions matter and then the weight. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it adds more than like a few pounds if, yeah. at, at most. Yeah, yeah. But the concrete, the concrete can definitely add weight too. Oh, I bet. How did you ship a table to Dubai? <laughs> Yeah, so the table, um, when it arrives at my house, because I, I order it online, it actually comes in a real compact box, and then the legs come off. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all I do is I, I, I enhance a lot of things. Like, I'll take things as is, and then I'll add my magic, like put it back one. in the box, and then ship it off. Just like this table, yeah. This yeah. table is uh, very similar to the style that I ship to Dubai. And that one, you just screw off the legs and, and the tabletop inserts into the box nicely. Oh, okay. Very nice. Yeah, all of this stuff so beautiful. Oh my goodness, I hadn't seen this one. This one's really pretty. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's a resin mold. Uh -huh. um, something I definitely want to start exploring more is like the different kind of molds. Because, I mean, you can, there's all different types of levels of resin too. Some you can use for countertops, other use, you can use for like tumblers. Mm -hmm. So there's just so much to explore, even though I feel like I've tapped into a bunch of different random type of techniques. I feel like there's still endless opportunities to like, keep going and doing different things um you know this is around the holiday so yeah lots of different types of ornaments and those did really well i have a question okay i have a question about getting things in the resin like because i've used resin before but it always seems like when i take the box off and i look at it the next day I get, there's like a, a little hair or there's something, you know, dust particles that have yeah. fallen in and I thought I got it all. How do you prevent that? I mean, it's very difficult for a hundred percent. Like, um, I try to, as soon as I'm finished and I retor, you know, I recommend torching several times just to get those air bubbles out. Okay. But once you get those air bubbles out and you, you find, you know, you take a toothpick and you kind of find, um, comb the, uh, the piece. Once I do that and I'm done torching, I literally don't allow anyone in the space. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I just, I leave it untouched because once you're, if you're in the room and if you don't have it covered, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a better, uh, setup so that I have a, a fully covered area once I'm done. But yeah, I agree. I mean, if it's a commission piece and I see a hair or I see like too much dust or or any dust, really, I will re-resin it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's that that part's hard because yeah, I mean, it's hard to avoid dust. Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating, but I love yeah. resin. It looks beautiful. This I'm, only because I love dogs. I'm pulling this one up. That's so cute. I hadn't oh. seen that one either. 
Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, I only did two of these, but they were, my dog owns one. <laughs> and I think this one I still have. So yeah, mm. I need to do a better job because I do, I am like kind of like drowning in inventory. So eventually I need to post. Well, them like, oh. dog lovers, you know, that's easy to sell to. So you should probably stick that on Etsy as a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. <laughs> oh, if you click, um, Sam, if you click to your right. Uh-huh. Um, this one? Yeah. Yeah, so this was a table that was purged on someone's curb, and I was like, oh, I'm going to take this. And I just resined the entire table. Oh, wow. And I molded, the like, the whole mountainside behind yeah. the beach. Um, yeah, I did a mini, too, but oh. I, I molded um, behind uh -huh. the beach out of uh, air clay huh. and just kind of like painted it and then I made a volcano so I could like store my like yep. brushes in. On that. that's cool wow. so. I remember when you were when you posted that the first time yeah there's another picture somewhere on here that's like that this is great because it shows scale yeah that's that, that, um, that's canvas now I I actually do not recommend doing resin on canvas uh, unless you have like a great support um, set up underneath because the resin is heavy yeah, and it will like almost make your canvas cloth sag. And so I actually got this effect without trying to do so. It's just the resin was pulling towards the middle and just like spilling down. Oh, interesting. And so it kind of worked out because it looks like the, the, the water is washing ashore. Yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's happy, happy accidents. You yeah, know? it's definitely a happy accident. Yeah. This is cool too. I like these. Um, I just like gears and weird stuff like that. So that's really neat because it's like na nature meets like a cyborg. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, these are blades that um, my husband's grandfather who passed, oh. um, he was an amazing builder and so we wanted to kind of preserve his memory but the blades on their own were really rusty and kind of dirty yeah and so i kind of gave them new life that's awesome oh very, very cool beautiful you really can make art out of anything yeah. <laughs> yeah that actually might be one of my more weird ones i just you know yeah i just feel like um okay so if you click on the right for um this one? yeah that one so this one i named um dragon and it was the uh, Game of Thrones dragons. Uh huh. Um, just because this was a commission that I did that was just like a monstrous undertaking because they were bigger than me. They're, they're almost as large as me. Uh huh. And um, I really, I had never done a pour this large to understand how much paint I needed. And I literally winged it and I managed to get the exact amount of paint I needed. Wow. Yeah. Gosh. So did, when you poured those, did you do them at, together, like seated together? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you want to, you want to have, I put them together, poured it, and then separated them. Yeah. Very messy. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a big wall. I might have to get something large to, <laughs> it doesn't have anything up there, so. <laughs> Very yeah. beautiful. Oh, I love these types of pictures. This is this is that piece. Yes, yes. I kind of took it in my garage because it didn't fit in my sunroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm going to, it's um, about 35 minutes into it. So I was just going to ask if anybody has questions or, um, you know, because I don't have any more questions. But if you want, I'll just keep scrolling. And if anybody has questions. Feel free to unmute. Man, this one looks like you're in an airplane. This <laughs> <laughs> is amazing to me. Do you recommend a place to get resin that maybe, I mean, you must get it by the bulk. I mean, by the. Yes, I, well, so I, for a long time, I was using art resin. Yeah. I, I love that company. It is higher you know, higher priced, yeah. um, but I ordered a 10 gallon. Okay. Yeah. I order from them, but I didn't know if there was another place that's not quite as expensive. But. So, you know, I really recommend, um, counterculture DIY. I've been using their artist resin. 
it has a, a long working time and I'm able to kind of create those waves that um, I'm happy with. And so they, they sell, I think, one and two gallons and it's definitely cheaper than art resin. Okay. Total, yeah, Total Boat is another company that um, I've been working with and their resin products, they have a wide variety. So if you let them know, um, cause in Virginia, you know, with the weather being so kind of up and down, um, you generally want 70 degrees, but you know, that's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I've been able to use their resin without having that strict requirement of that temperature, um, being exactly at 70 and it, it's been working fine for me. Okay. So, yeah. Um, there are other companies like Faux Rizzle Resin and uh, Pro Marine, but for, for me, those were short working times. Like, I think oh, okay. Pro Marine was like eight minutes. I'm like, ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like things start to like harden and it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, so then you feel bad because like all the resin dries and you haven't even done anything. Oh, yeah. Especially on a big piece. Wow. Yeah, you need, I like Artist Resin from Counterculture DIY because it's 45 minutes. That's nice. Yes, it's really, it's, it's really nice, especially if you're like still trying to enhance it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it's important to experiment with different product lines. Okay. Is this one of your videos? It's like class. It shows how you do stuff. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. play it. I'm just going to play one just because sure. that's kind of cool. We can watch you do something without you having to do it. <laughs> yeah. So I use these different, I'm sorry for my shoulder, <laughs> but I've gotten better. Um, people love process videos. And so what I do is I will um, use different apps to slow them. I mean, to um, speed, them speed, speed yeah. them up. And so, you know, a lot of these take me 45 minutes, but you can watch it in 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that really actually helped promote, like, you know, uh, oh, a following. People just really enjoyed seeing me do my work. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. I think it's so cool. Is that a stand that you put down? Um, yep. You can either. Well, so in, in reality, I would recommend that you mix the sand in the clear resin first and then lay it down. I think it, you know, sometimes I think it er early on I was still experimenting. So I set the resin down and then I put the sand on, but sometimes you can still have dry sand. And so when you're blowing using that um, heat gun, it yeah. can blow like the, the sand into your water, which you don't want. Oh, okay. You know what I mean, so you kind of want to mix even if you do like glitter for like geodes, you're going to want to mix your um, whatever product you want to use or sand into the resin and then lay it down. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's no other major questions or anything, I'm so excited that we got to do this today. This was like a nice, just a nice break. And it's so cool because everything like, in the beginning, you did all these different colors and all these different pores. And then when you move to the ocean look, mm -hmm. I'm not very big of an ocean person because I was like, oh, but I tell you, I, I stare at your stuff and I'm like, oh, thank you. So awesome. Like, I wish I could own it all, but I would never be able to put it anywhere because <laughs> our, <house is> like, <laughs> our house is full of like reds and browns. And stuff. <laughs> but it's well, so, so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, what's yeah. funny is my house is actually very earthy, and so I do. I struggle, like, <laughs> where to put my things. They don't match. But my God, I, you could actually build entire design rooms around this stuff. Like, it's yeah. so pretty. I love the colors. They're so beautiful. Yeah, Thank you've really you figured it out. You really figured it out. I think that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this was great, Sam. I appreciate you. Um, you know, inviting me and um, this was great. And I appreciate everyone for, you know, tuning in. Yeah. Yeah, this was a great um, little group too, because it's nice to have just enough people that everyone can, you know, have, can reach out and ask a question if they wanted to. So, all right, well, our next one is gonna be, I'm gonna unshare.
Hello. Hi. <laughs> so um, our next one is going to be Monday, which is May the 4th on purpose because it's Star Wars Day. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to have um, Emily Cole on. She's going to talk about cosplay designs and um, cool, cool ideas. So hopefully if anybody wants to tune into that one, it should be fun. And at the same time, one o'clock, same place, different link. <laughs> but I'll, I'll um, update that Thank in the you. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Have All a good right. day, everyone. Thank you, Linda. Bye. 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 Let me see if I can. Uh.